Today we are going to be going over the rebuilding of the Cadent Black Clausen STR valve. This unit is used for controlling the flow of heavy contaminants, typically found in cleaning and detrashing operations for pulp fiber processing. Cadent supplies separate rebuild kits for rebuilding both the valve gate and the air cylinder portion of the valve. These kits contain all of the parts needed to rebuild each section to like new condition. Replacement control valve and proximity sensors are not included, but can be purchased separately. Better yet, Cadent will rebuild your valve for you. Simply contact your regional sales manager or customer support manager directly. Follow all facility prescribed equipment safety procedures as well as those listed in the manual. If safety procedures are not followed, contact with moving parts may cause serious personal injury or death. The following video instruction is for Cadent Black Glossen STR valves numbered 6013773-005. This model features a 43mm packing space, which is packed as shown using the recommended combination of square braided and compound packing. It can also be packed using only square braided packing if desired. Earlier models, such as the 6013773-001, have a smaller 33mm packing space and are to be packed using an all-square braided packing method only. Disassembling the STR valve for rebuild. Begin the disassembly by closing the STR valve. Now, remove the locking pin from the storage position. Loosen the guards and pull them apart to reveal the open and closed locking position hole. Secure the locking pin in the closed position. Follow safety standards to a zero energy state. Disconnect the pneumatic lines from the control valve assembly and electrical power from the two proximity switches. Place the unit on your work surface with the round side of the valve body assembly facing up. Clean the unit, removing any debris buildup. Remove the guard pins, locking pin, and guards. Remove the four hex nuts from the four tension rod transition beams. Remove the two upper tension rod transition beams and the upper transition plate. Locate the clevis and clevis pin. Remove the pin and detach the clevis from the slide gate plate. Separate the valve body assembly with the slide gate plate from the body and set the body aside. Remove the four packing gland heavy hex nuts. Remove all heavy hex bolts connecting the top and bottom of the valve body. Remove the valve body top section and disassemble the valve seat by removing the six socket head retainer cap screws. Remove and discard the following items from the top section of the valve body. The six retainer cap screws and retainer ring. The retainer ring gasket, compression ring, and seat. Discard the slide gate plate and the packing. Remove and discard the scraper bar and compression cord from the bottom section of the valve body. Remove the valve body gaskets from the top and bottom halves of the valve body, taking care to remove any and all debris from the body parts. Clean the unit with solvent, retaining both halves of the valve body and the hardware. Now we are ready to rebuild the valve body. Remember to use all of the parts in the kit when rebuilding, even if some of the original parts do not look worn. The valve body gaskets are essential. If they are not installed correctly, the valve clearance will be incorrect and the valve gate may jam. Attach one of the Rebuild Kit's valve body gaskets onto each body half. Place the new compression cord and the scraper in the valve body's bottom half. Place the slide gate in the valve body's bottom in the fully closed position. Place the valve body's top half over the bottom half of the valve. Apply anti-seize lubricant to all threads and install the body screws and nuts. Torque the body screws to 41 Newton meters. In the top section, install the new retainer ring gasket, compression ring, and seat. Reassemble the valve seat reattaching the retainer ring with the six new cap screws. Next, 
will install the packing into the packing gland. The packing seals the gate from the process fluid and is provided in the kit. First, form one ring of packing cord around the slide gate with the cord ends cut at a 45 degree angle, making sure the cut ends abut tightly. Push the cord ring down evenly into the packing space as far as it will go. Next, evenly fill the gland space around the valve gate with the packing compound, tamping it into place as you go until the gland is almost filled. Leave approximately 3 millimeters of the gland unfilled. Install the packing gland onto the packing gland studs with the packing gland nuts. Tighten each nut gradually, alternating tightening in a crosswise pattern. Top left, bottom right, then top right, bottom left. Torque each nut to 30 newton meters. Do not over tighten the packing nuts. When packed too tightly, the movement of the slide gate can be restricted. If the packing leaks at startup or soon after, tighten the packing gland nuts with an open-ended wrench until the leak stops. In most cases, the packing gland can be tightened with the valve installed. Set the valve section aside and turn your attention to the body and cylinder section we separated earlier. Remove the two lower tension rod transition beams and the lower transition plate and set them aside. Disconnect the control valve assembly from the cylinder. Begin to disassemble the cylinder by detaching the eight hex sleeve nuts and four tie rods that hold the cylinder housing together. Then, detach the seal retainer plate by removing the three screws that hold it to the cylinder end cap. Discard the shaft cup and wiper rod seals as well as the seal retainer plate and screws. Pull the end caps off the cylinder housing and remove the piston rod assembly from the housing. Completely disassemble the piston, discarding the O-rings, piston seals, wear sleeve and bushing. Reassemble the piston, rod, and cylinder, replacing the discarded parts with the new parts from the kit. Reattach the control valve assembly. Now, let's reconnect the rebuilt cylinder to the transition support and rebuilt valve gate. Reattach the lower transition plate to the cylinder and the valve gate with the two lower tension rod transition beams. Apply anti-seize lubricant to all threads and attach the two hex nuts to the lower transition beams. Reconnect the clevis to the valve gate and piston rod. Reattach the upper transition plate with the two upper transition beams. Apply anti-seize lubricant to all threads and attach the hex nuts to the upper transition beams to secure the unit. Replace the guard pins, locking pin, and guards. Good work! This concludes the basic rebuild of the STR valve. Refer to your operations manual to test and adjust your rebuilt valve, including the setting of your proximity sensor clearance and performing a final valve checkout. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Please contact your Cadent Black Clausen customer service representative for more information and to answer any questions you may have about our products.